Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanna to try two new things. First, I've been really, really meaning to try this, but I want to try and start to compost. I already have basically all of my materials. The only thing I need to gather is outside and those are the dead leaves that I have um, all over maybe half of my yard, maybe a third of my yard. Um, so I have a lot of leaves out there that I that are starting to decompose, so I really want to get out there and gather up some of those leaves, most of those leaves, we'll see. It's freezing outside, it's probably like 40 degrees. And the lows this week is going to be in the high 20s, so that is absolutely freezing. I have a couple bags in my freezer that are for composting. I set out two bags to defrost and they're in my refrigerator right now. So I have to grab those and I think they're already defrosted. So, and then I also have, have, I think this could be counted towards brown material. So when you're composting, you need, I forget the ratio, but you need more brown material than green material, which green material is going to be anything from your kitchen, basically anything from your fridge. So, um, not anything from your fridge, but like things like vegetable, fruit scraps, um, coffee grounds, tea bags, stuff like that. It's in my fridge. And then I have my brown materials, which I have a couple of paper towel rolls, toilet paper rolls, um, some egg cartons in here, and some dryer lint with a lot of hair in there. So this can all be composted and I'm gonna have to rip most of this up. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use it all today. We'll see, but just have to rip it up into the itty bitty pieces. The way that I'm going to be composting or trying to compost is I'm going to be using a container, maybe two, and I'm going to be using the containers that have been outside for my fall garden that didn't work out, unfortunately. So one of those is empty. And then if I want to use another one, I'll have to empty out the dirt in there. Maybe I can even keep it in there. I'm not really sure. That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know a lot about composting. The way I learn is by doing, but if you guys have any tips or tricks, that would be very, very helpful for me. I've always wanted to compost. I just never had the courage. I thought it was too complex and takes too much time. I don't know. So I'm gonna gather my green materials and then I got my little brown materials and I'm gonna go head outside. So because it's so darn cold outside, I wanted to put my jacket on and I was still freezing. This is just a liner, but it made me a little bit more warm. So I grabbed my basket, I headed outside, and then I went ahead and grabbed my container that I had already emptied from my fall garden. And then I went to the back of my yard that's where all of the trees and all the leaves are. And there are so many leaves back there. I think I'm gonna go back out this weekend and try and clean up as much leaves as I can. Not because I don't want leaves on the ground, it's because I can use these leaves. I'm not a big leaf picker upper when it comes to fall. I really enjoy the look of leaves on the ground i think it's really pretty and it's also really really good for the grass and the earth to get all of those nutrients those excess nutrients from the trees back into the ground i think that's super important and that is something that a lot of people miss so basically sorry my dog's drinking water right now basically all i did was i filled a good amount of leaves on the bottom of this container and then i tried to shred up this mustard greens i think it was but it was still a little frozen so i kind of gave up and i was like you know what i'll let nature handle it and then i tried to break apart the cardboard and the egg cartons and so what i did is 
I put the leaves, which is brown matter, and then I put some green matter, which was some vegetables, and then I put some more brown matter, and then a little bit more green matter. And then I went ahead and mixed it around and wetted it a little bit and stuck it in a place where it'll get hopefully a little bit of sun. And the next thing we're gonna be making is homemade eggnog. So I no longer have to buy it at the store. I'm so excited. The dogs are barking because Nick's home. So the first thing I did to start off this eggnog was I cracked six eggs into this bowl. And then I put, I think I put around one cup of sugar, granulated sugar, in with the egg bowl. And then I whisked it until the egg mixture was creamy and was a very light consistency. And that took a little bit of <laughs> arm work, but I got it just right. And then after that, I set that bowl aside and started on the milk base. So I did one cup of heavy cream and two cups of regular milk. I used full fat milk, I believe it's called. The red lid ones. <laughs> and then I used, I think this was a fourth of a teaspoon, but I accidentally poured a little too much. So I poured most of it back into the container and I think I got about a fourth in there. And then I did a pinch of salt. And this next part I didn't really show, but you're supposed to ladle the egg, or not the egg, the milk mixture into the egg mixture until the milk mixture is almost gone. And then you would kind of wait for it to simmer again on the stove or wait until it reaches 160 degrees in temperature. And then now it's time to whisk, not whisk, <laughs> um, strain the actual eggnog itself into a little strainer and i found that using a spoon really helped i think it was still a little chunky so i think i'm gonna go back and restrain it because i don't think i could drink eggnog this thick and chunky i think that's a little gross so but i was able to get it all in this little container we are back in the kitchen the next day and I did decide to strain the rest of this eggnog or strain the eggnog again, but I'm not so sure about the flavor of it. I mean, it looks, it looks exactly like eggnog. It's crazy. The consistency is perfect. It's just the flavor isn't really doing it for me. I don't know if I cooked the eggs a little too long because it does have more of a egg custard type of taste, not eggnog. The flavor, it wants to be there, but I don't know how to help it. I might mess this up and add a little bit more milk. I don't know, what do you think? I think I should add just a little bit more milk and see, because I feel like I can also taste the heavy whipping cream a little too much and it tastes a little too much like heavy whipping cream. So let's try and add a little, little bit more milk. I totally don't have milk. I drank the rest of it this morning. Okay, um, I really don't know. I might see, because I really want to try and perfect this eggnog, but I just don't know how. I really just don't know how. I mean, it looks perfect. The consistency is great. The color is great. I just, I wouldn't rather make it than buy it. I would rather buy it if it tastes like this. I can always try and make, try a different recipe, which I think I'll do. 
I really think this would benefit with a little bit more milk, but unfortunately I don't have milk. But it wasn't another fail. It wasn't an absolute success, but that is okay. That is what happens in the kitchen. We make mistakes and we create and mess up sometimes, or we learn from it, especially when you're trying something new and you haven't ever done it before. But once you gain that experience under your belt, you can kind of play around with it the next time you try and make it or try it again. So that is definitely something I am looking forward to. I am really, really hoping I can perfect this recipe because to make homemade eggnog and to make it taste even better than store-bought is my goal. That is what I want to do this season. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed watching this short little video today and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye!